Good morning, everyone. I'm Martin. This is Alex. We're both from the Angular core team in Mountain View. And we would like to talk to you about Code Happy with TypeScript. Alex, you chose the title of the slides. What did you mean by that? So this is a talk about developer productivity. But productivity can mean different things to different people. And maybe to your manager, it might mean when she comes over to your desk and says, hey, we have this important customer. I would really like to get this feature shipped next week. Can you make that happen? And then you feel stressed out. Uh, we want to talk about productivity that makes you feel happy. So I know for me, what makes me feel happy as a developer is when my ideas are flowing into a design and into code, and that code is working, and I'm shipping it to my users. And in our case, you guys are my users, so that makes me feel really happy on those days when that all works out. Um, so with TypeScript, our team has been able to code happy. Uh, so the first thing we'd like to tell you about is some of the details of how it is that TypeScript has helped us with this. Um, now, you've probably seen and heard a lot about TypeScript at this talk, uh, and I imagine a lot of you are still wondering whether this is something you really want to dive into. Um, so uh, we, um, we have some build tools uh, that we can show you uh, how to actually make TypeScript work in your project, and we'll also show you a couple of more detailed, more fine-grained uh, things about how to make TypeScript right. work for your project. And importantly, we want to give you uh, the rationales that we use to make decisions about whether we want to use TypeScript on our team. And this is something that you and your team can use to help you make decisions. Right. So code happy, how can we get there? And uh, one of the ways how you can get happier while coding is you can use tools. Tools can help you code happy. And that is, if you uh, automate some of the steps of your development process, or if you have tools that help you over the rough parts, where like something is broken and you don't know why, or you, you have to perform this nasty process every time you want to do a release or something like that, tools can make you happy then. Right, so um, when I think about tools, I often think about this quote, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem looks to you like a nail. Um, and that kind of rubs me the wrong way, because as a developer, I have a lot of different jobs on some days, I'm working on a legacy code base that I'm not that familiar with anymore, and on other days I'm doing some rapid prototyping that I'm gonna show in a demo to my team. And so for me, I need a lot of different tools to do that. A hammer isn't enough. Right, so as software engineers, we're craftswomen and craftsmen, so we want to have a very nice stack of tools. We want to know these tools, we want to understand them, and we want to know when to apply them. So we want to have the right tool for the job. For example, so if you want to do some shoveling in your garden, uh, you might want to have a little spade, and you also want a very nimble tool, right? You want the, the right size tool for the job, and you want to have a, a lot of overhead. So if you have this thing, then, you know, in your garden, it might not work so well, right? You might actually need a new house and or garden after using that. And our point here is that TypeScript is more the shovel and less the, the giant excavator, right? So it's not going to destroy everything around you. You don't actually have to fit all your projects around the tool. It's actually just a tool that helps you in your project. So if you imagine your project is, uh, is the red line in this graph, right? So the, the complexity of your project goes up over time because you're adding more features, or you're adding more people to the team, or you, you have a bit of bit rot or something like that. Complexity usually goes up over, over time. And you can use tools to manage that complexity, to stay happy, to stay productive, to have code happy days. So if you have, for example, from the get-go, you might have version control. And version control gives you a certain level of, of tooling, for example, that you can go back to a well-known state or you can share your uh, code with other team members. So it raises the, the bar of complexity that you can manage in your project. And if you cross this bar that you can manage, you get unhappy days. So you might later on add something like automated tests so you can refactor your code and you can still be sure that your code still works. Or you could go on and say, well, maybe we need code reviews so we can treat, like, you know, have more consistent code base and teach junior people on the, on the team, and so on. Right, so uh, this is an example of a project that really did start uh, heading up that complexity curve, and that doesn't always happen. Uh, sometimes the app just stays small, sometimes you decide to cancel the app. Um, so you're right to think that maybe you don't want to bring all these tools in at the beginning, because if you don't reach that complexity, then you've wasted a lot of time configuring and setting up these tools, and maybe they slowed you down while you were developing. The point of the story is tools come with costs, benefits, and applicability. And you, as, as a team, you should decide what you want to use, what is useful for you, and how you can apply it. However, TypeScript is one of those tools that's really nice, right? It's very nimble, it's very useful from the get-go, so TypeScript helps you along the whole project lifespan in our experience. It's very easy to set up, you get benefits from the get-go, it's very incremental, so you can say, I want some type annotations, but I don't want to have an entirely type code base. You can choose which degree of TypeScript is useful for you. It's also very flexible. 
So you can write ECMAScript 5 style code. You can just use functions and function closures and, and be good with that. But you can also use classes and class inheritance if that is your thing. But it's, it's not forcing you into any of these modes. And it's also a very scalable tool. If you get started, you may be just one developer trying something out, but it's already useful for you. We'll show that in the demo. You get auto-completion, you get go to symbol, you get compiler errors, which can be very useful. And uh, it scales up to larger projects where the code navigation becomes more, and more important, and it's more important to be able to understand large code bases, to have contracts between different parts of your application. So we think it's a very nice tool, and you should uh, give it a spin. Uh, so Martin and I are here talking to you about this because we have a lot of experience now using TypeScript. Uh, together with Igor, the tech lead on the project, we did most of the work to migrate Angular to TypeScript and also to make sure that the developers continue to be productive that whole time. Um, so we want to have a lot of happy coding days on the Angular team. And so far, TypeScript has been really fantastic for us. Um, obviously, as a fairly large project, uh, we're using things like uh, the ability to do renaming. And if you've followed the Angular alpha releases for Angular 2, you might have noticed that we've gotten really good at renaming. Um, we also do, uh, we use code navigation to get around our large code base. Uh, the type checker helps us a lot if we do a refactoring and we miss some spots. Um, and then we also, we make agreements on our team about what we want to do for things like uh, the quality of the code, so we can use a linter to help us enforce that. And for code style, we can use a formatter to help enforce that, and we'll show you that. Um, and the most important thing that we've spent our time doing is authoring code in TypeScript that we use in our build tool chain to make our developers productive. And TypeScript is a, not only a compiler, but they have language services that we can hook into and use their APIs, uh, which we've done. So we now have a really fast development round trip with an incremental compiler that doesn't need to compile the world. Uh, and we've built um, tools to help us target, uh, for example, uh, Angular 2 is used in Dart. And in order to make that possible, we wrote a transpiler uh, in TypeScript that translates TypeScript code to Dart code. Um, and these things are all possible in TypeScript. So uh, importantly, this, this build tool chain, and especially the really fast incremental development experience, is something that we're working on in the Angular CLI tool that you saw yesterday morning in the keynote. All right, so it was a lot of fun building these tools, and uh, what we're building now is source tooling for you. Angular 1 built testing into the framework. You might remember that. Before Angular 1, it was, for me at least, very hard to test my web applications. Angular 1 went ahead and said, okay, we're gonna build this into the framework. And so that meant you didn't have to test your application, but it was much easier testing your application when you, was using, when you were using Angular 1. And Angular 2 does the same thing. It adds on top of the testing support and adds static typing to the framework. So again, you don't have to use types, or you don't have to use static types or any of the tooling associated with it in your application, but having it built into the framework makes it much easier to do so. You can actually use TypeScript with Angular 1, and that works well, but you, can, you will see in the demo that we have a whole bunch of things built into the framework because it goes all the way down with types and, and TypeScript that makes it easier if you want to use that. So we're, we're, our job now is to make TypeScript work well for you, so make it easier to use TypeScript with Angular, and actually so much so that uh, if you have any problems with TypeScript ever, you can just mail Alex, and he'll just come over and fix it for you. Uh, I could probably do about half of a QPS of fixing people's build errors, yeah. Right. yeah that's so we'll that's just good. give it to, to Bill then from Microsoft here, who, who will do every you know, other problem. Yes, and by the way, we have an Ask Me Anything a little bit later where you can also bring uh, any issues you've had setting up TypeScript. Right, so let's get to the demo. Great. Uh, so uh, in this demo, we're gonna set up a really quick TypeScript Angular 2 application, um, but we're not gonna use the Angular CLI. It's not really finished yet, um, and uh, we're also not going to copy-paste from a GitHub repo, which is what probably a lot of you have done with like a seed application that has all the complicated bits in there. We're gonna do it from scratch, because we want you to see all of the complexity that's involved, um, and we want you to, to, to have a good understanding of how much complexity is being brought into your tool chain that you're gonna have to manage this, right? So if the, if the tool doesn't abstract it all away for you, you might someday have to understand it. And because we're gonna do all this crazy stuff, uh, actually a note for the organizers, we will extend our slot for five hours. And, uh, yeah, so if you can just bump some talks. Yeah, just, just bump some by the emails off, it's okay. Good, all right, thanks. So uh, let's see, so first we need to uh, make a new directory. That's a very nice directory. Is this, is this gigantic enough? Uh, Let me make it more gigantic. more gigantic. I've seen a lot of tweets about things not being gigantic enough. Okay. Great. Um, and we'll go there. Uh, and I think the first thing I need to do is, is bring these tools onto my machine. Right, so we're gonna use npm install to right. install TypeScript and Angular 2 into our new project. And while this is failing, 
we uh, can talk a bit about that. So we use the Node Package Manager to install specifically versioned um, tools into our project. And then we can use these tools that we installed to make sure that we have a consistent environment. So we can actually run TypeScript compiler from the Node modules folder. And actually, by the way, at this point, you would be all set to start with Angular 2. But we also want to set up TypeScript for our project. So we're going to go through those steps. So right. we're running so, the. So notice I'm, I'm actually about to run the compiler for the first time already. So like we haven't even gotten to code, and already we're running a compiler tool. I mean, You're a bit it feels crazy. So, so we use TypeScript compiler to set up our project. To, uh, so dash dash init is the magic mm -hmm. trick there that creates a configuration that we can later then use to, to build our tools. And then we'll pass target ECMAScript 6 which means we're going to take TypeScript code and compile it to ECMAScript 6, to regular JavaScript, and then we'll pass image. I typed ES, ES5. Oh, did I say 6? Oh. Yeah. Uh, or maybe 5, like whatever floats your boat. Uh, and then we'll do uh, uh, experimental decorators. So mm -hmm. that's the add something syntax that you've seen in the slides before. And we pass dash dash emit decorate metadata. Dim, 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 dim. Oh, I can't believe already, I type already, all of this in front of a demo. Um, Are we almost done? Uh, I think this, this looks pretty good, so maybe right. just hit enter. Right, so that made this tsconfig.json file, which you might, have, you might have seen one of these already. I'm going to take a quick look at that. Um, so this has all the options that TypeScript needs to understand how, to, how our Angular code is going to work. Um, and importantly, we'll check this file into our repository, so we're sharing it with our coworkers. We're also sharing it with our continuous build, so we know that we have the same version everywhere. Um, and we can share this with our development tools. So locally, when I run the compiler or when I go into my editor, I'm going to get all the same settings. And so apparently we're done now. So uh, organizers, you can unbump the other people. It's, it's, it's fine. I think we'll. Yeah, we're ready to code, actually. So I'm going to start Visual Studio Code. Um, fun little bit of trivia while I maximize it is that Visual Studio Code is written in TypeScript. And this is running inside of a little browser shell. So I'm going to create app.ts, start typing. This is an AS6 import statement. Right. And, uh, and now let's see if the tooling is already working, because there isn't actually any complexity. We were misleading you. Oh. Um, this is already working. So here we have code completion showing up. Um, do you remember how to write an Angular app? I think it's all about components now. So right. something okay. with a C, maybe? C-O-M-P. Right. So code completion is not only about uh, me not having to type onint right now. It's also uh, about not, like if I'm learning this API, I might not be really confident with what I need to type right now. So it's nice that this gives me a list of things that comes from the Angular library, and it even includes this little documentation string. It says declare reusable UI building blocks, so I know this is, this is the right selection. And now if I hover over this while holding the command key, I see some preview of documentation that's actually attached to the declaration of components. So I'm gonna navigate there with command click. And this is what I mentioned before. Right? So we built the static types into the framework. So you can see on the left-hand side from you, uh, you have this, this file tree uh, with all the declaration files. And you have the documentation directly in the code. And you have the types directly in the code. So it just gets easier to use TypeScript and Angular 2 together. Right. Um, so this is, this is all the magic you need. And you may notice that you can look around the rest of the Angular library here. So this is, we're looking inside of the library. We see the JS files and the DTS files that, that declare their API. So uh, there's also an example here in the documentation. I wonder if this is more current than a blog post that I was going to copy from instead. All right. One of the nice things here is that because you installed Angular together with your other tooling in your node modules folder, you have a specific version of Angular that you're using. Right? And you can be sure that all the documentation and all the examples that you find in this version are actually matching your particular version of Angular that you're running. And so you never have this, you know, you find a blog post about Angular 1.4 and you try to put it in your Angular 1.2 app and nothing works or the other way around. Right, so I've, I've pasted that into my program and I'll remove those stars and now it looks like this is good. Great. So should we extend it a bit? Uh, yeah, well, I was thinking we should probably show some more advanced TypeScript features because everybody's really excited about it at the conference. And well, on the other hand, we promised that this is actually very nimble and you could just get started with JavaScript. So let's try that maybe. Yeah, it's not really time to, to totally learn a new language. Let's just drop back into what we're familiar with. So I'm going to templatize this hello string and put a greeting here. And we know from the other talks that we need to create a property on the object. And here I'm just going to just call a top-level function to get this which we can define down here. And then we need some way to get the greeting from like a service or something. Maybe just steal it off the URL for the time being. OK. So, so the location, uh, I think. Yeah. Window. Oh, there. And so what you can see here is that even though we're writing plain JavaScript, this has no type annotations, it's just a regular function, and we're just accessing browser APIs, we already get 
uh, autocompletion and even documentation strings on these APIs. So this is exactly the situation where I was talking about. You get uh, huge benefits even if you're not really using TypeScript, so you're just writing JavaScript. Yeah, so now I have some red here. Do I need to fix that first? It's one of those famous compiler errors, right? So the interesting thing here is that we get a compiler error and it's correct, right? So we haven't declared the property greeting uh, on our greet class. However, TypeScript compiler will still generate code if you tell it to. So you will still actually generate JavaScript code and you can still execute this. So this doesn't stop you from your development cycle if you're prototyping, it just works. I think we should probably add the property though. We don't want to leave the maybe, type check maybe broken. Maybe also add a type on that? Yes, let's do that also. Uh, but that was optional. Uh, one more thing to point out while we're here is that uh, we also get error detection and completion inside of the, the, the properties that we pass to the component decorator. Okay, so with that, maybe uh, let's go back to the slides. Yeah, so um, what we just showed you is uh, we installed Angular 2 in TypeScript. Um, we configured TypeScript by running a command line uh, and we made sure to use the right version of everything so that our teammates will be able to reproduce the same result. And then stuff worked. Uh, we were able to use auto-completion inside of the Angular APIs. We navigated to the definition of component. We found documentation there. We used the type checker, but we didn't really have to. And we wrote some plain JavaScript code that we were comfortable with. So, however, this was kind of a toy example, right? So we wrote the small file, and we saw like the individual benefits. If you're just coding yourself, you get auto-completion, navigation, all this kind of stuff. But it is also interesting to see what happens if you have a larger application. So we had the tour of Heroes demo that uh, Nomi and Rado showed in the Getting Started with Angular 2 talk. And this is kind of the situation where we're now adding ourselves to that project, right? So this, this was developed by Nomi and Rado, and now Alex is also gonna join the team and work on this, and I'm gonna join the team and slack off, but you know, at least Alex is working. And so we have a slightly larger app, and we can show what, what's happening there with TypeScript. Yes, is this, is this the correct time? We have only 17 seconds? I'm not sure I can do this demo in 17 seconds. Uh, um, I think we started a bit late, so no worries. Okay, um, right, so I just got a fresh copy of the repo I synced to head uh, right before like the demo. Just now? Yeah, I mean, that's my usual developer workflow. I kind of sync to head, make sure I'm developing against what's current. I don't want to have to rebase later, okay. right? Let's, let's see. Oh, well, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's fine. Uh, so I'll go to the Tour of Heroes. We're using Webpack for this, so I will start that. Actually, let me start that in the background. And then um, it says it's serving. So right. here's so this is our page, demo. and uh, so here's the app. Uh, but where's the list of heroes? Could you check the console? Wait. I think there's, um, just, you mean like in yeah. front of, cool. uh, okay. I, it's probably gonna be like giant red errors everywhere. Yes, giant red errors, right? So our wonderful I friend, don't... undefined is not a function. Yeah, I, I, I missed I'm, you. I'm not coding happy anymore. We kind of ran, on, ran yes. away from the topic so that, of the talk. That's the bad situation, right? We checked out our project and stuff's broken, right? And so we can see, yeah, okay, so something. I open one of these files, right? Could you actually, so if you go to dashboard component, which was in the stack trace, we could also go to dashboard component.ts. Right, and so because we have source maps and TypeScript generates those, we can actually go over here and set a breakpoint on this line in our TypeScript source where we were calling the get heroes method. And if I refresh, we should hit that breakpoint. So you can see that you can actually debug the TypeScript code itself directly in the browser. You also get access to the JavaScript code if you, if you need it. Oh, look at that, it says list heroes. So I think probably what happened is somebody made a change like last night in the hotel and then I synced, I don't know if, if Rado's here anywhere. Oh. I don't know, I don't know who did it. I mean, the team is getting bigger. But this is actually something that happens all the time, right? So joking aside, um, when you come into work and you're ready to do something and you check out the repository and you start working and then you find out that it's broken, it's a really annoying interrupt. Um, and so what we're seeing here, you know, my first impulse might be to just fix this problem. But really this is where we showed you earlier that the complexity curve of our project. Now we have more people on the project. It's not enough for us to all be independently remembering to build and test things before we check in. This is where continuous integration is the right tool to add. So before the demo, I, in anticipation of this, uh, I added a, a Gulp file to the repository. And uh, Gulp is a build tool that you can use to build JavaScript. There's many different tools like it. Uh, we don't have a particular preference here, but Gulp, can actually uh, run on the command line, and so we can run this build and see, okay, dashboard component, uh, the method has the wrong name. Yes, up <laughs> scrolling up the, the hardware. Yeah, there, it's up there now. And so this is nice because we have a command line build that is reproducible by everybody on the team and can also run in our continuous integration system. Yeah, so uh, I guess we should maybe go and, um, and fix this problem, right? Right. Uh, so um, here's the Gulp file Martin mentioned, so we're not really gonna talk about exactly how to set up Gulp, but it's a tool that we use on our team. There's a compile task here on the line I've highlighted, which we just ran, and it runs the TypeScript compiler, hands it the source maps, uh, it's versioned correctly. Um, 
and, uh, and we also have a watch task below, which would let us do the fast uh, local development cycle. So, um, so next, I'm going to open the TypeScript compiler tool window. And oh, look, I don't even have to copy paste from the command line. Uh, down here at the bottom, it already, TypeScript has already detected our error is here. So it's on this hero service. I'll navigate there. And now I see that it has a type of hero service. So I'll navigate again. And now here we are. Uh, that doesn't fit on the screen. Could you fix that? Oh, yeah. It looks like somebody also submitted with some kind of wacky formatting. I mean, maybe they thought this was a, a good format. But of course, since we have on our team already agreed on what formatting we want, we have a .clang format file over here. Um, and so this is where we can encode our agreement about what, how many, you know, for example, how many columns we want our code to be. And now if I go back to my file, everybody on the team will reproducibly be able to hit format and get exactly the same formatting. So now we don't have code reviews where I have to nitpick over somebody's indentation. All right, so list heroes, I think that was the mistake, right? Should be get heroes? Yeah, so let me use rename in TypeScript. So I'll get both of the places that that exists in this file and go back to the demo. Okay, we're ready to start the demo. Uh, let's just go back to the slide. Time's up. Oh, oh well. Demos don't always work in front of a live audience. Okay. So what we just learned was, actually that was our demo, that uh, TypeScript let me go back to coding happy pretty quickly. So we were able to use source maps to get breakpoints uh, in our TypeScript code. Uh, the type checker gave us a really quick reference to where something was broken. I ran a formatter, so I don't have spurious commits where I'm editing lines that aren't really part of my change because I was updating the formatting. And we have a reproducible build, which I think is worth spending another minute on. Right. So, uh one of the points here is the files in yellow you see here are your developer configuration. And to make sure that everybody can reproduce what's going on in your project, you should check those in with your project and make sure everybody has the same experience. And then the other thing that we would like to mention is you should separate your build artifacts from your sources. You should have a separate folder that has your build output, like the, the red stuff here versus the, the blue stuff. And you should use a build, command line build tool to produce that. And then you don't get your sources and your generated files mixed up. It's much easier to get a clean build to delete everything if something goes wrong. So with that, our takeaway is it's optional, right? So you don't have to use TypeScript. You can just use JavaScript if, you, if that's better for you. However, TypeScript is really nice. It's very easy to set up. It's just a few simple commands. You immediately get benefits from it. It was really good for us. And uh, yeah, with that, I think uh, have more happy days coding with uh, Angular 2 and maybe TypeScript. And thank you. <laughs>